Hello everybody, Richard Michael Owen here from Owen Automotive and today we're looking on Bring a Trailer. This is their British section. I just love searching this section. There's so many tremendous lots and a lot of great discussion and sales that happen here on this website. And what I'm checking out here is this 1961 3.8. It's a really early outside bonnet latch car, OBL, external latch, whatever you want to call it. And that means it's part of the first 500 cars. They're very special. They're kind of prototype cars because after the first 500, they really ramped up production and changed the specification on these cars. And this one's pretty neat. It's very early, April 18th, 1961. It's number 23 of the left-hand drive roadsters. So it's gonna have all the very first details because within the first 500, the specification changed quite a bit. There was a lot of notable changes that happened even within the first 500. So yeah, if you can see here, it says it was delivered new in Carmen Red. So at some point, this car was changed to Primrose Yellow. I think Primrose Yellow must have been really popular in like the 80s or 90s. I'm not sure because even my own car, a black on black car was painted Primrose. Now here we look, we can see the interior here and I see a lot of original details. Wow, the original seats it looks like. So it'll be pretty interesting to deep dive into this thing and show the details. Yeah, the engine bay. Yeah, we're going to talk a lot about this car and all the details. There's the uh, heritage certificate. Here we can see April 1961, Carmen Red with black interior. Okay, well, let's get into the photos here. Here's the rear photo. Looks like it's on some old tires. Gaps look pretty good. Looks pretty dirty. The windscreen looks pretty dirty there. But the, everything looks nice. The belly pan looks good. Looks like a bit of overspray in the wheel arch there at the rear and at the front for when it was painted yellow. And we'll move to the side now. It looks like a very good car with nice gaps. Front bumper kind of curves up a bit here, but no big deal. Yep, big long resonators in here. That's a 3.8 detail. Next, uh, we already saw this picture. Okay, from the front, yeah, you can see this bumper here on the left. It's drooping a little bit. And this is something that has to get set up right on cars before they go to paint and body. This might be a very simple adjustment. Um, the nose here, it, it looks pretty good. I don't know why it kind of kicks down at a point at the bottom here. Maybe just a slight dent in the nose. Um, yeah, otherwise looking good, nice and symmetric. Good from the other side. The hood might be able to be shimmed differently to reduce this gap, not sure. I'd go and look and see how many shims there are in there. And if there are shims removable on both sides, that nose can be pushed back a little bit. And the hard top. Well, let's talk about that. That's pretty rare. Um, you know, it has all the chrome there on it. These are exceedingly difficult to restore. It's two layers of fiberglass and some unobtainium kind of plastic material that's on the inside. So that those things are not, they're pretty serious thing to restore, actually. I've, I've done one and it wasn't easy. Looks pretty good from the other front three quarter and the other side and the rear with the rag top on it now that's looking pretty old but yeah it's there nice to see here if you're looking at the rear the belly pen i still see the spot welds on there i think that's nice washington now that's a good area for a car it's kind of just below the rust belt and yeah, all the cars that we get here around in BC, at least, the ones that come from Washington are really nice. Uh, the bumpers are sitting really nice. Trunks sitting really nice. Looks really good from the rear. Oh, look at this from the top. Was this with a, from a drone? This is a pretty neat shot, actually. Kind of show, makes the E-Type look kind of stubby. Yeah, very cool. Another one from the, from the upper high. We are looking at the bumper. Uh, trunk gap's okay. See the early cars just say Jaguar on the trunk. Tail light here, looking at all original, Lucas lenses. Rubber looks good. Chrome looks passable. Little pitting on there. Look at this, this, uh, this must be something special. Something about this lens, I'm not sure. Early lens. Here's where the license plate goes. I don't normally see this square section in here, so that's new to me, that's pretty cool. Uh, the the license plate lights are, are butlers. Now, that's a really early feature. I think later on these were Lucas or, or another name. But, yeah, the butler's license plate lights are pretty special. The other tail light there, rubber looking a little perished. And the tail light reflector. Well, we're getting in detail here. Look at these uh, tail lights. Holy. 
Okay, um, got the hard top. You can see that seal that kind of runs along the edge of it. Uh, I, I don't know. That may have been replaced. I'm not sure, but uh, it looks kind of wayward to me. Here we are, the front lights and the glass around it. Now, that front fender sticking up all, quite a lot there. If you, if you look into the headlight area here, you shouldn't be seeing that, that, that yellow there. I'm not sure if that's a pre-prototype thing or somebody's been in there doing some metal work up at the top here. It looks wayward too. Maybe that's just the way these cars were made, but somehow I doubt it. I, know, I wonder if something's happened to this side. There you go, you can see the triplex uh, original lens in there. Now that's a sign that maybe it hasn't been in an accident or anything. So yeah, definitely have a look at that side. Yeah, you can see a lot of yellow around the other headlight um, sugar scoop area too. So I'm not sure, usually on cars you do not see the bodywork poking through like that. Yeah, those tires are old, they gotta go. And there's the fastener for the headlights around slotted there's the outside bonnet latch the, the little um receiver end of it open that flap up in there and put in the t key they call it you can open up the hood that's the way it's latched inside the fuel filler area looking good wipers looking good um, what am i looking at here <laughs> okay so the winds with the window finisher here it kind of ends on this squared piece that's a very early detail this isn't finished nicely but it's nice to still see that that this is a feature that's only on the early cars and this door finisher should kind of have a little bit of a lip on it can't see it here because the doors can should be actually two piece on these having a good look at these wipers <laughs> oh and there's that finisher piece that square piece that's only on the early cars for sure Wipers again, wipers. Front windscreen, triplex, that's nice to see. Okay, this is an early detail up near the top of the window here, this little spacer. That's only for the early cars, that's neat to see. Here's the receiver end where the soft top plugs in or the hard top. Now these rubber pads, that's also a cool early design feature you don't see on the later cars. This one looks like it might be the original piece of rubber on there, which is pretty cool. Uh, very nice to see. We are looking at the door glass, maybe triplex, other door glasses, triplex, a really crappy tire uh, and wire wheels. I can see the yellow overspray in the wheel well here. Uh, but overall looking pretty good. I don't see any anything wayward. We're going to go to all the wheels. Oh, the interior. Wow. Look at those seats. Wow. I'm in love already. Okay. So lots to see here. So look at that steering wheel. It's the thick rim steering wheel the later ones they reduce the diameter the thickness of the wheel quite a bit not the diameter sorry but just the thickness of the wood um, the dash top cap here is a flat one it's thinner than like regular production versions and it's nice to see it that's intact because you can't it's hard to replicate that kind of stuff and I'm just going to assume that this is all the original aluminum which is lovely um, even the remanufactured aluminum isn't quite all the way correct so it'd be nice to save all that with this car or just leave it as is you could leave this car as is and drive it on the road that'd be fine um yeah there's that steering wheel oh and look at that it has the aluminum that goes all the way through the wood all the way around i think that's very rare and only on some of the very first cars how neat is that wow what a what an interesting thing oh there it is in detail you can see the aluminum it runs right through the wood that's well, very cool. Oh, these look cool too. The handbrake, brake fluid uh, light here. It looks like something was gnawing on it though. Okay, and also another thing, this dashboard, if you see the vinyl it's covered in, it's it's kind of has this textured dimpled kind of pattern. That is That fine pattern is only on the early cars. Go look at your, like early, any other E-Type and it has this kind of more like this uh, textured pattern, not a dimpled pattern. Uh, speedometer. 177, uh, that, that odometer reading is pretty low. What's up, guys? 177 miles, I don't believe that. Uh, where the mirror's poking through there. Okay, here we go. Look at this fascia piece on the aluminum. Wow. So, yeah, obviously looking like the original one. Definitely would save that. And I've tried to anodize aluminum, these old pieces like this, and every little dot you see here, that's in imperfection it shows off even more so and so if i was doing this car i'd try to save this piece but i wouldn't try to over restore it 
I don't know, you might be able to do a light polish, clean it up and preserve it. Um, look at that cigar lighter. That's the same that I see on the XKs. Holy, that's kind of neat. And the info strip looks like the original one and it's intact. So yeah, this car was pretty well looked after. I'm pretty impressed by that. There's that dash top, the flat top dash top. Looking at the texture there, that's really neat. And the radio, oh man, this is definitely a product of the 80s. Look at that tape deck in there. Woo -hoo, I hope they haven't cut out the hole too big for that for that awful tape deck. But uh, yeah, that's the first thing I rip out, that's for sure. The ashtray. And the center console. You can see the carpet's really beat up down here. Maybe missing carpet behind the passenger seat. And the shift knob, I don't know, it looks like all of the lettering's just rubbed right off. Hmm. Yeah, look at that. That that shift knob doesn't look right to me, but maybe it is. I don't know. As you know, these things are very special. These early cars, and I'm not the expert on these things. I only just know a few details about them. Oh yeah, so you see this dimpled pattern? You can see it on the shifter here. See how it's kind of a coarse texture in between the dots? That is an original dimple pattern. The reproduction doesn't have that rough texture. So there you go. You want to save this stuff because they just don't make it right. Speaker in there looking pretty awful. <laughs> but yeah, um, let's move on. Glove box, a little bit of mold in there. This is flocked. Again, like I said in my last reaction video, you can just use vinyl paint on these things and refurbish them. Don't need to replace them. Yeah, really neat interior. I think my favorite part is that steering wheel, though, that thick rim steering wheel with the aluminum all the way around. Yeah, I love that. These seats are pretty cool, too. I mean, I know very few of my customers that where this would be acceptable to get in and just drive this, but I would. I would just leave it. Oh, the floor mat looks uh, not original. Maybe it is. I don't know. I can't say if this is original or not, but uh, it looks pretty mangled. Okay, yeah, I don't know what to think about this interior. It look, just looks too good given the condition of the rest of it, but, you know, probably, probably replaced at some point. Oh, this is cool. So this is the T key for the, for the bonnet latches. And this is in a really specific spot. It looks like it's somewhere on the console behind the seat, maybe. That's really neat to see. I've never seen that before. There's little holders for the T key. Grab handle, that, is that the grab handle? I think that's a grab handle. It doesn't quite have the silver hardware I'm used to on the later cars. Oh, where are we? Oh yeah, the soft top frame. This is where the soft top frame is. Just looking at some of the panels here. Not so much to see. This is the little button in the back firewall to open the trunk. Ooh, underneath inside one of these seats. Uh, yeah, just, it looks, at least it isn't rusted away. A lot of time moisture gets trapped under here under rain and it rots these these seat pans out completely behind the gauges not looking so clean i have to admit but everything's there do see some electrical tape and you can see that carmen red see that's the first sign of carmen red there in there and behind the fuse block area well that's neat little tag there around the harness fuse blocks with carmen red in behind seeing a couple uh errant uh, connectors but you know it's looking good original fuses in there that's kind of neat uh, air demister uh, can't say much about that there's some awful wiring in front of it here oh uh, this is the inside of the hard top and it, you can't really see it here but it has a very specific texture to it that you can't replicate so on the last one that i restored i just used vinyl paint on this textured uh, vinyl and it worked really well and it looked brand new even though it had a, a, a you know scratch or a little spot here or there, just painting that is a good enough. And that way you don't get into it because, man, taking this apart and putting it back together is no fun. Soft top. That looks, actually, that looks pretty old. That looks pretty old, that soft top. Door panel. Not much to see here, really. Uh, hinge. I think this is an early hinge. I think this is a grease nipple up here, which makes it an early hinge. Door hinge. So, yeah, stuff like that. Just little details are what make these cars different and so much harder to restore. Because if that hinge is worn out, you've got to repair that hinge. You're not buying a new one. And like there's so many pieces to these cars that are like that. This sill, um, I wonder if it should have a chrome finish here. here. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But uh, that sill material looks like it must have been changed at some point. I'm not sure actually. 
the, spe- the absolute top guy that would know this would be Michael C. Mueller. He wrote the book on these things, and he's the kind of guy that could probably dissect this 10 times better than I can. But here we go. You know, I'm having fun. I like to share these cars and share my thoughts. Uh, door seal looks like it's been replaced. I'm not sure what to think there about that door seal. Uh, the other door panel looking kind of floppy. Oh, we see more Carmen Red up here. Now, when they painted the Primrose Yellow, they just painted some of the wires. Man, that's such a pet peeve of mine. Just get the masking tape out, people. And so, yeah, hmm. likely this interior is all just uh, some reproduction um, pieces from the 80s. Uh, except for the seats. Those seats look original. Underneath the doors, you know, look at that. No rust. See those little drains there? They're kind of riveted on either side. That's interesting to see. Um, really, really sound and solid car. Trunk drain? Is that a trunk drain? Yeah. Kind of neat. Oh, we're, here, we're inside the trunk. Look at that tan uh, upholstery. That's looking pretty, pretty, pretty good. Might be the original tan upholstery in there. And that, that, that panel on the side there is made of cardboard, believe it or not. Yep, inside the trunk, pretty tidy. This is the access panel that we don't get on the later cars. It lets you access the inboard rear brakes. And here we're seeing the fuel tank and the original line and a funny looking fuse maybe for the fuel pump. The fuel pump in this is gonna be in the tank. Later cars it's external, but the fuel pump is actually on the, on the top of the tank there. The wooden pieces above the tank and the spare wheel. And here's the spare tire area here. Looking okay. What? I don't. I don't. A tool roll in the spare tire? I don't. A tool, I don't know about this tool kit. Is this original? I, I have no idea. I thought all the E types had tool rolls, not a box like this. This is more like a saloon thing. But maybe. How cool is that? Is this original to the car? Wow, that's kind of neat. And there's the fuel tank. You can see there the suction tube, and that's where the fuel pump's mounted in there. It's looking kind of crusty. Looks like the original sender though. Yep. And here we go. Whoa, this looks really nice. I don't see any creeping corrosion here or anywhere. These, this is where these cars always corrode. I always like to put cavity protection spray down these ribs and this car looks really solid. Yeah, what an, what an amazing piece really. Back side of the trunk lid looks good. I think this hinges for the trunk. And then the engine bay, here we go. There's a lot of different detailed differences under the hood of these things. The most, one of the biggest ones is the adjustable here, right here, this adjustable throttle linkage. Kind of similar to the XK150S. That's only on these early cars. Of course it has the early rad. And what else can I see here? Um, it looks, what else? Yeah, it looks really nice. This primrose yellow has just been painted around everywhere. So somebody's, Definitely had a brush or something in here to paint the yellow. But from what I can tell, it doesn't look like it was taken all apart to be painted yellow. So there's a good chance this car really hasn't been ripped all apart. It's just been resprayed. They did a pretty thorough job actually to get that yellow underneath those carbs. This takes a lot of work. Porcelain manifolds look really good. Maybe too good for their age. And here's the Nivacode brake reservoirs. That's a really early feature as well. And what else do I see? Header tank in black. Um, there's that really alum early um, aluminum radiator, sorry. Yeah, um, yeah looking all, pr it's all there, that's for sure. And we're inside the cylinder head V here. Um, just looking pretty standard. And we got the triple SUs. Again, a better view of this adjustable linkage. Vacuum takeoff here, looking like the original hose. Yeah, this car is pretty amazing, actually. This is uh, a lot of original details. Nobody's really screwed it up. It's just been resprayed once. The heater here. Now, the opening for the heater um, air box is a little bigger on these early cars. And for whatever reason, on the later cars, they tightened it down to a smaller radius. Uh, you kind of see these receiver end down here for the latches. Well, this is really neat, the washer bottle, the glass washer bottle, and it still has the blue tag in here. These things often get discolored or, I don't know, they just turn to jelly sometimes for, for no reason. Early brake system, looking very much like a 3.8. Nivacode brake reservoirs, 
cool early feature. What's that voltage inverter? Man, that's awful. And so is this uh, external tank here. Whoa, somebody put in a different washer tank in here. So these are the things that really have to be taken out of the car. I really don't think they belong. Carburetor tags intact. That's a rear carb. That's where that R is. Uh, coils, second month of 65. So a replacement coil, but the right coil. Here's the generator, 11th month of 1960. So that's correct. That's neat to see. Voltage regulator looking correct. There's the receiver end for the latches on the bonnet. Here we're going back to the trunk here. This fuse. Is this a fuse? I'm not sure what this box is. If anybody knows, please let me know in the comments below. Nice to see the spot welds in the engine bay. Nice to see the spot welds on the sill. There's the latch mechanism on the hood. And we just keep going. Okay, yeah, so these ones have um, welded in louvers. These panels were made off separate to the hood then welded in and that was changed later on in production there's the welded louvers up close and here we go this is the inside of the front fender we can see the carmen red poking through and now one thing that's interesting about this car compared to the last car the the 4.2 is that this flange here this strengthening flange that's attached to the outer skin is actually um, spot welded on I know this because Chuck at Monocoque Metalcraft talks about this all the time, how these early cars, the hood flanges were all welded directly to the skin and then they metal finished the other side. And that took a lot of manual labor, so they stopped doing it. But yeah, the real deal is these hoods when they're spot welded all together rather than bonded as they are with the later cars. Uh, felt. This is a neat piece of felt here inside the vent for the intake of the front nose. Oh, we got compression. Okay, let's see. 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150. That's a pass. There's a hole. I don't know. Underside. Wow. Yes, I like underside photos. Belly pan's looking good. Exhaust is looking good. I don't know what this smeary stuff is on the floor, but it definitely is a flat floor. See the way the floor just doesn't have a dip in it? Um, oh, yeah, and the engine here has a smooth case uh, oil pan. I like to see that. Uh, looks like the suspension's been painted black at some point. I'm not sure if that's original. You can see a little bit of Carmen Red still poking through on the bottom side of the engine subframes. Looking very good and solid, though. Very solid, actually. I like this car. And then the double um, damper independent rear suspension here. Again, you know, you can leave this as is. You could clean it up with some dry ice blasting or do the full restoration. It's up to the next owner to decide, you know, that's pretty cool. Uh, I can see the brakes here looking original with the Dunlop calipers. Yep, looking good and straight really all the way around here. Again, I'm seeing more Carmen Red and yeah, the old brakes. And here's all the numbers. Hey, this is kind of neat, I like this. It kind of lets you kind of see, see all a lot of areas all at the same time. What a great picture that is. See the wiper motors correct and some body tags and yeah, that's brilliant. I love it. And then we got the chassis tag with a bit of corrosion around here, but it looks like the original chassis tag. It looks like it's never been messed with. That's what I like. And the serial number on the pic on the picture frame, engine number, cylinder head number. Oh, that's neat. Look at that date. This engine was made in 61. I love that. Body tag. Not even sure what this is. Is that a differential? I'm not sure. That's a differential on a gear. And the wiper motor, third week of 61. That'll be correct. Man, what am I looking at here? I don't even know. Okay, and then we got the production. Yeah, the Heritage Trust Certificate. We saw it earlier. Um, some documentation. I love that. One of the earliest known E-types. Isn't that brilliant? And here's the book. This is the Bible for these early cars. Michael Mueller and Mr. Haddock have, this book is totally amazing. If you're into these early cars, you definitely need a copy of this book because it goes through all the intricate little details and production changes of the first 500 cars and all the cars thereafter. Yeah, oh yeah, here's a bit of a preview. You can see what they're doing. And this is, uh, maybe even this car's in this book. And here it is, as discovered. Wow, it doesn't look like they changed anything. They've just left the car as discovered. And one thing I'm just noticing right now is actually that the sugar scoops are silver. I think the early cars, it would have been matched body color. Oh man, what an amazing find this is. Just to, just to buy the car like this, lovely, great. 
Okay, well, I guess that wraps up this auction preview. Good luck to all the bidders. Um, yeah, and if you are buying this car or working on it, please let me know. I'd love to follow up with cars like this and their histories and see where they go. Okay, oh, look, and this is the collection it comes from here. An amazing collection coming from Driver Source that they're selling on Bring a Trailer over the next few weeks. And that Aston Martin with those white walls, wow, I just love it. I never seen an Aston Martin on white walls and some about that, I don't know, it just works for me. Okay, well that's it. I'm going to end it there. Thanks for watching everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.